اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین سیدنا و حبیبنا و طبیب نفوسنا و شفیع ذنوبنا ابی القاسم محمد اللہم صل على محمد و آل محمد کما صلیت على ابراہیم و آل ابراہیم و بارک على محمد و آل محمد کما بارکت على ابراہیم و آل ابراہیم انکا حمید مجید Respected brothers and viewers, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and Eid Mubarak to you all, my dear brothers and sisters, young and old, ladies and gents. May Allah bless you on this blessed day of Eid. As we know, in some countries they celebrate Eid more than a day because, alhamdulillah, they have that opportunity. But in other places where maybe we get only one day to celebrate, however, our celebration, whether it is one day, two days, or three days, or seven days according to some places, we need to remember that celebration is what keeps us within the limits and boundaries of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We shouldn't cross the limits to commit sins on these blessed days of Eid. Now, what are our duties towards ibad of Allah and towards one another? and what our duties on the day of Eid. When we talk about duties, we know that there are those duties, we can call them duties which are recommended and duties which are compulsory. So today in this program, we want to talk about some of these duties, recommended and compulsory duties. When we celebrate Eid, we need to remember that. But the first important point for us to remember is that to celebrate Eid, is sunnah of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. To celebrate Eid, the celebration of Eid was established by Rasulullah. So no one should come to you and tell you, ah, don't celebrate Eid because of A, B, C, D, E. We shouldn't listen to those people. If they are there, of course, Muslims, majority of Muslims celebrate Eid. We should celebrate Eid because we follow the sunnah of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And, وَمَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ According to the Holy Quran, whatever the Holy Prophet brought to you, مَا آتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ If Rasul has given, has brought something to you, فَخُذُوهُ Take it. وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ If the Holy Prophet stopped you to do something, then stop, don't do it. So we celebrate Eid because it's the sunnah of the Holy Prophet. He celebrated the Eid. Aimma al-Athar celebrated Eid. Their followers celebrated Eid. And that's why we have the name Eid. So that's uh, number one. And as we mentioned in the previous program, that the Eid has got a special flavor in terms of celebration, especially when we remember the dua of Qunut, that we recite in the kunut that this day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it special to the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And alladhi ja'altahu lil muslimina eida. We say ya Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we thank you because you made Eid to be a celebrate for muslimina. Alladhi ja'altahu lil muslimina eida. وَلِمُحَمَّدٍ صلى الله عليه وآله ذُخْرًا شَرَفًا كَرَمًا مَزِيدًا The Holy Prophet has been give, gifted, has been given special, special uh, position on the day of Eid by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's our duty. Number one is to celebrate according to the celebration of the Holy Prophet صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم. Now, when we look at other points or what and what can we do on the day of Eid. Here we find few points which scholars of akhlaq from the ahadith have mentioned to us in order for us to celebrate. Number one, we need to visit one another after Salatul Eid. It's our duty. To visit one another, it is recommended. We visit one another in, a, in, a, in our houses. I go to others they come to me and I receive guests and I go, I become a guest of other people. 
This on the day of Eid is highly recommended to be done. Why? It will remove whatever is in our hearts in terms of hatred, if we can say. If there was something in heart, and if I come to your house to visit you, you will not close the door behind me and say, go away, and especially on the day of Eid. So on the day of Eid, we exchange these visits in order for us to make the bond, the family unity, and uh, not only the family, but also the unity of the ummah of the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is number one, highly recommended to be done on the day of Eid. Number two, we visit not only our dear brothers and sisters, extended family, mu'minin and mu'minat, muslimin and muslimat, but also we visit those who have passed away. The beauty of Islam is this, that we shouldn't forget, forget those people who have passed away. Why? Because they have rights on us and we have to make sure we don't forget them. Rabbana, O oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to the dua, we say, Ighfir lana. Rabbana ighfir lana wa li ikhwanina alladhina sabakuna bil iman. O oh Allah, forgive us and those who, brothers and sisters who came before us, preceded us in terms of iman, we remember them. On the day of Eid, we go to visit their graves. We do ziyaratul kubur. Highly recommended. The Holy Prophet did that. And we follow the sunnah of Rasulullah. On the day of Eid, we go to visit the people who have passed away. And we recite dua for them. We recite Quran for them. We remember them. It's our celebration. And within our celebration, there is a special place to remember those who have preceded us. And this makes us to have that connection to say, we have not forget, for, forgetting you, we have not forgotten you, and also we are here to pray for you. So, and finally, we remember that we also, they have preceded us, and we are going to be with them. So on the day of Eid, if we have this attitude of visiting even those who have passed away, it will remind us that a day will come when we are going to die other people will come to visit us. If we have that attitude on the day of Eid, it is difficult again to commit sins because we know that the celebration, it is within the boundary of Islam and we remind even those who have passed away. Another recommended act to be done on the day of Eid is to exchange gifts. What is known within the Arab communities as Eidiya. So, or within Pakistani India co community, Eidi. So, you are giving the gifts to one another. Exchanging gifts is very important. We do in normal days, but on the day of Eid, it's very important for us. A father or mother, you buy your gifts and you exchange them within your family members on the day of Eid. If you have young children, the question will come, Mom, Dad, why this gift for me today? Your answer is very simple. It is Eid, my dear. Today is the day of Eid. The Holy Prophet used to do this. If this can be said to the young one when he grows up or she grows up, she will remember the importance of giving gifts on the day of Eid. And the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam has mentioned that if we want to love one another, we need to give gifts to one another. And the Holy Prophet recommended the idea of giving gifts. He says that even if when you give a gift, let it be a stone which you clean your feet with, that gift will be highly appreciated by the receiver. So on the day of Eid, we exchange gifts to one another to say that this is the day Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored us. We need to remember that also to one another. And of course, many people have the way of celebrating Eid by eating sweets. It is a nice thing to be done. 
we eat sweets on the day of Eid. It's a sweet day, by the way. And the day which is sweet, we can eat sweets and exchange sweets to one another. But of course, we need to remember the limitations because if we forget the limitations, then there is, of course, a healthy danger there. So we need to keep that in our mind. The day of Eid is the day of Musafaha. The day of shaking hands. We start this within the masjid, within the place we came from Salah. Not only shaking hands, but also hugging one another and exchange du'as to one another. Shaking hands, the Holy Prophet وسلم, says clearly that if you shake hands to one another, of course, men with men, women to men, uh, women to women, men to men, according to the Islamic Sharia, we follow the Sharia, we follow the norms, we follow the Sunnah of the Holy Prophet وسلم, this has got a big impact. My dear brothers and sisters, it is a hadiyya which we got it from the Rasulullah when he says when you shake hands to one another or you hug one another, the hatred will disappear from your hearts. And this shaking hands shows that you care for me and I care for you. By the way, do you know, in the Western countries, in some countries, those who are known as old people, those who are retired, and those especially who are in the homes, they don't have anyone to take care of them except the nurses and staff member of those homes. Do you know that one of the biggest things which they miss, according to the research which has been done, is that they say we don't have anyone even to shake hand with? Allahu Akbar. How many hands you shake with the mu'mineen when you go to pray? And mu'minat to mu'minat when they go to pray? How many hugs you receive? By hugging someone who shows that you care, and Islam has given us this opportunity on the day of Eid to say, I care for you, you care, you care for me. There will be no one to say, oh, there was no one to say salam to me, no one to shake hand with me, no one to hug me. Because the day of Eid is full of these acts, good acts which we need to do. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do. But there is one manner we need to remember to remind one another. When we shake hands, we shake hands properly. Not just by giving the pinch or the, the toe, tip toes of uh, your fingers to someone just like that. No, make sure you shake hands properly. And if you hug someone, you hug once properly. And this reminds us that the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew that within the community, maybe there will be people who don't get opportunity to shake hands with others at least on the day of Eid or after every salah, like in some other masajid, they do it's very good attitude. When, once people finish their salah, they shake hands, they hug one another. It's a sunnah of the Holy Prophet. We need to do that because this will bring us closer and it will remove that hatred if it is in our hearts. The day of Eid is the day of reconciliation. Reconciliation. According to Imam Amir al muminin Ali bin Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallamuhu alayhi says, Islahu dhatil bayn, to reconciliate between the two people who are not in good terms, for you to reconciliate them, is afdalu, is better than ammatu salah wa siyam, rather than fasting and, and observing salah, praying and fasting, the benefits of reconciliations, bringing reconciliation between two people, the thawab is more than to pray and to fast. And it is here on the day of Eid, we need to remember our duties to one another is to try to reconciliate if there were any problems. Amongst us, we need to remove the hatred. Dear brothers and sisters on the day of Eid, if I can't go to visit Someone I know, maybe there was something between me and them, at least I need to pick up the phone and call them and say salam. Afshu salam, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says, 
Do you want me to tell you something? Which if you do it, you will love one another? The companion said, Yes, Ya Rasulullah, tell us. He said, Afshu salama bainakum. Say salam to one another. And the day of Eid is the day of salam. The day not only saying salam with our mouth, but salam also in our hearts. When you say salam, you mean it that I'm at peace with you and we need to bring this reconciliation to one another. Let us remember another group of people. We need to say salam if they are not with us, especially those Aitam, those orphans who are kept in the orphanages, in, in the places where people, yes, they take care of them. Sometimes they don't, peep, they don't get people to visit them. We need to go to say salam, give gifts to them. They are in need of that love which they miss. Wherever they are, they are isolated. We need to remember to be closer to them. Also our duty, which is very important, on the day of Eid is to remember the Madhulumin, to remember those who are oppressed, to remember those who are in difficulties, to remember those who cannot find peace to celebrate Eid. When we celebrate Eid, when we say salam to one another, when we shake hands with one another, when we hug one another, let us remember those who are in difficulties and they don't have anyone to be closer to them. Those ones, it is our duty to pray for them. Earnestly, we pray to them and we pray for them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change their affairs to be a better one. And how beautiful we used to recite during the holy month of Ramadan to make everyone to be included in that dua, Allahumma, ah, Allahumma adkhil ala ahli al-kubur al-surur. Allahumma aghni kulla faqir. Allahumma ashbi kulla ja'i. Allahumma aksu kulla uriyan. Allahumma kudidayna kulli madin. Farrijan kulli makroob. Rudda kulla gharib. Fuka kulla asir. Aslih kulla fasidin min umur al-muslimin. Ishfi kulla marid. غير سوء حالنا بحسن حالك اكض عنا الدين اغننا من الفقر انك على كل شيء قدير this dua which we used to recite mostly after every salah during the holy month of Ramadan, Ramadan this dua also need to be recited on the day of Eid to say ya Allah we are here to pray for all those who are in difficulties those who do not have food ya Allah feed them those who do not have clothes, Ya Allah, clothe them. Those who do not have shelter, give them. Those who are ill, Ya Allah, cure them. Those who have passed away, Ya Allah, make them enter into your mercy. Whatever is wrong within the Ummah of the Holy Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, mend it. Make our affairs to be better. We pray to each and every one who is in need. On the day of Eid, this is the day to remember those who are madhulumin and those who are destitute, those who are fuqara, those who are masakin, those who need your dua. When we celebrate Eid, dear brothers and sisters, we should include those also who do not have time and opportunity to celebrate because this Eid is for all and each one of us. And remember, my dear brothers and sisters, there are many mu'minin outside there who are better than us in terms of taqwa. They are more pious than us. But because of imtihana tests, tribulations, Allah has made them to be in those difficult areas. We need to remember them and pray for them. Those who are madhulumin, we pray for them. Those who are not well, we pray for them. This is our duty. When we celebrate Eid, we need to include each and every one of us. And finally, when we celebrate Eid, Remember that this Eid could be the last Eid in our lives. This Eid could be the final Eid. We may die after this Eid. We may not be there next year. So we need to make sure we celebrate it according to the principles of Islamic celebrations. And then we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to prolong our lives in order for us to be able to continue to be better people and in order for us also to be alive, and in order for us to be able to be healthy, insha'Allah ta'ala, 
so that we can celebrate another Eid next year and many Eids to come. I hope inshallah by this way we will have a meaningful Eid where we can eat and drink and celebrate and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make your Eid to be a better Eid and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prolong your lives and my life and lives of all mu'mineen and mu'minat, muslimin and muslimat so that inshallah we can celebrate another Eid, Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr next year and years to come. Wa akhiru da'wana nilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi tayyibin al-tahirin Eidkum mubarak wa as'ad allahu ayyamakum wa kullu amin wa antum bi alf 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 khair wa assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh